Hello, welcome to my bookbinding studio. Today, we're making paper. I've been saving my scraps and trimmings for the last little while, and I'm so excited that this day has come. I'm using an old magic bullet blender to make pulp from these papers I've soaked overnight. These are Nepalese lakta paper, which are made of bush fibers, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they set together. Now, I don't recommend using a white towel because I ended up staining it. Blend the pulp as fine as possible with more water than you think and set aside. The finer the pulp, the smoother the paper. The paper can be soaked for as little as a few hours, but I like to soak them overnight to be safe. Also, make sure that your paper is cut or ripped into smaller pieces so that it'll blend easily. When I tried this out for the first time, I thought it was funny that I was making paper with already processed paper. But I realized I needed proper equipment to process raw fibers in order to make paper from scratch. Okay, let's finish blending the rest of these. Here's my setup. I have a large IKEA bin, which will be my vat of pulp and water, also known as a slurry. Fill the vat with water until the depth is about double the height of the mold and decal, which I will show you in a second. I made this mold and decal myself with two frames, aluminum screening, and weather stripping. The mold, which is the frame with the screening, will catch the paper pulp, and the decal with the weather stripping will create the straight edges of the paper. We need a little bit more water. Let's set up our couching station. Couching is the process of transferring the wet sheet from the mold onto another surface to dry. I laid down some wool felts to make the surface softer. I like using cotton fabric as the couching sheet because for me, the paper has resulted with a smoother texture. Wool felt and pellon fabric are other preferred materials. It's really important that the couching sheets are wet enough for the pulp to stick. This is dry pulp that I prepared from my last session. I re-soaked and re-blended them and mixed them into the water. It takes a couple test pulls to know how much pulp to add to the water. The higher the pulp to water ratio, the thicker your sheet will be. I like that the slurry looks like diluted kanji. Holding the molten deco firmly together, agitate the slurry and pull up. Holding it nice and straight, the water will drain which will also allow the pulp to settle into an even sheet. Carefully lift the decal and cooch that sheet. This is the most challenging step for me. It's taken a lot of trial and error to figure out the right strategy. I set the mold down like I'm closing a door. Then I soak up the excess water with a sponge. Pressing the frame down will help the paper adhere to the couching sheet. Then slowly lift like you're opening the door. I saw that the pulp was breaking apart so I tried the other side and it stayed together. This is where the pros use a press to squeeze out all the water. I'm using these shop towels to roll out the air bubbles and press out the water with a sponge. Remove as much water as possible, being careful not to shift the pulp underneath. And that is the full process of making one sheet of paper.
This was so fun. I saw this idea on paperslurry.com and wanted to try it myself. I really loved working with different color combinations and different types of gradients. I used the pulp that I blended earlier in the day and mixed it with the white pulp that I have left over. I'll let this play and I'll talk to you in a bit. This is how I save leftover pulp. I pour the water through the screen into the sink. Then I pull the pulp together and roll it into a ball and let it dry. I can re-soak and re-blend this pulp at a future date. Let's see how the paper dried. I find the step of peeling the fabric off the paper so satisfying. The texture isn't as smooth as I'd like it to be, but I love how the gradient colors turned out. I've learned a lot through this batch. A lot of the papers took on the wrinkles that were in the fabric, so I need to make sure the couching sheets are wrinkle free. Also, I've learned what is considered too thin or too thick. When the sheet is too thin, there are more air bubbles when I cooch. When it's too thick, I notice that the pulp starts to sag when I hang to dry.
flatten the sheets of paper in my homemade book press. Even though making paper is a serious and messy operation, I've fallen in love. These colors really inspire me to do something special with them. I'll show you some of my ideas on how to use them. This is a simple way to make a book. Fold your papers together. Use a bone folder or a ruler to crease your fold. Poke three holes into the middle. You'll need thread that is a little more than two times the length of the book. And then sew. I use a curved needle here, but you can use a straight needle and some embroidery thread. This method is called the pamphlet stitch.
so much for being here today. Let me know what your favorite paper or project was. Please tag me on Instagram at bittermelonbindery if you end up making any paper inspired by this video. Subscribe to follow my bookbinding and paper making journey. Take care and see you next time.